is YouTube and this is BJ Black doing a speedrun of Mindless Quest Paradox RPG. After choosing very easy for our difficulty, we watch our introductory cutscene and then straight away go to our settings to set our run speed to maximum, our cut-ins to off, and our battle speed to maximum. Forget about the diary. Listen to the story of Hans the Woodcutter being kidnapped by a bunny slime. Since we're just here to. That was interesting. I got the first battle achievement after my first runaway achievement. Here's Elias, all chibi-fied and all. She is very ill-tempered. We could call her Ilias. And here we have the bunny slime that they kidnapped Helm. I gotta say, that battle music is loud. Louder than it needs to be, seriously. There's Chibi Alice. Get out of our way and we can run through the rest of this. Now that the bunny slime's been defeated, there aren't any random encounters. This is our childhood friend, Sonia. And here is a ceremony. It's entirely ceremonial since our needing power is conferred. Although the but goddess does visit for the first time in 30 years. But now that all this is taken care of, we can do what we really need to do, which is collect our party and get on the road. Here in our house, we have these two fighting for dominance. We're going to pick Alice because Elias is a weaker fighter. And after Alice, we get to come down here, speak to the mayor. And then Sonia will join our party. We run away from Nero just for fun. It gives us a new achievement. He says that uh, Alice, Sonia, doesn't exist. Or shouldn't exist or should exist but not here. This is Paradox RPG, and it's all about the paradox because it's really hard to make sense of what is and isn't happening or supposed to happen. But anyway, that particular thing is foreshadowing for when Sonia turns into an ap apoptosis in the second chapter. Harder than it needed to be. Another cutscene where we receive an important artifact. The Pocket Maul Castle. It's important in a normal playthrough, but we won't be much spending spending much time in it. Well Meruk joins our party, that's a freebie for us. Fish. Speak to Alice and enter the tent in order to end this scene. Now that we've gotten to Eliasburg, the White Rabbit shows up. We ask her questions, pick up this thing after her, and we talk to that guard, and then this girl, a guy in this shop. You have to speak to these five characters in town in this order in order to advance the plot. Here's the fourth one. A little sidetrack to get some items. And the 
this character in this town is here in the back alley. That activates a slight change in this guy's dialogue. And warp back to Elias Birch to move on with the quest. Having talked to the five characters in Eliasburg and then the head, head priest, these bosses spawn in this cave and we'll be able to defeat them and move on with our lives. Gobu, the goblin Masume, is actually the toughest of the four bosses. I've never actually lost characters on more than one character on any of the others. Although occasionally they've gotten one down if they're lucky. This is Puchilamia. And Vampire Girl. Now having actually defeated someone with my player still alive, I get to switch around their abilities. At level 2, the players get the ability to have the encounters you run into. And if you equip it, you don't need to worry about encounters anymore. We will be having one more random encounter in this game. After defeating Dragon Puppy and watching a couple of scenes. Here's a scene where the townspeople forgive the girls for their troublemaking. If you watch closely, Gobu turns into Puchilamia as the scene fades out. What we did that for was to make this thing appear. We kill it out of principle, but we do need to speak to it. Having done our speaking, we embark on this side quest. You could get, a, could get out of this side quest if you had 1500 gold, but we don't. And this should be my last random encounter of the game. Here we have the nameless slum where there's been trafficking and illegal trafficking in Phoenix Tales. After buying the password from the suspicious character in the back of the house bar, we give the password to Don Daria and she'll sell us three Phoenix Tales, but at that point she'll refuse to sell us anymore because we're too suspicious. So in order to figure out where she's getting them, we get to come down here where she will unlock this door, go in, and lock us out. But if we come down to the bar and talk to this guy, he can steal the key from Dondaria and we can get into that warehouse ourselves. Notice this, and then hide while we see a cutscene revealing the source of the Phoenix Feathers, Phoenix Tales. A child Phoenix, imprisoned by Dondaria. Having defeated her, we can have her join our party, which is valuable because we're short on good fighters. I'm going to switch Sonya out for Minnie, and turn on Minnie's ability to have encounters. With this many half encounters, you actually don't get any encounters at all. Except for one portion of the game where you can have encounters, actually. Warping on, what we got from Amira was knowledge about something in this, the inappropriately named town of Porno. This is where a bunny girl hangs out. Not the bunny girl we're looking for, but she has info. Having 
haven't spoken to that bunny girl. The bunny girl we're looking for will jump into the Tartaros as soon as we show up, and we can follow her in. previous run throughs I got Nudico from the house back there, but I'm skipping it this time. And the white rabbit again. I'm ignoring you. If you don't have your encounters all the way down to zero, don't walk around on the grass out here. The random encounters will kill you. Now we're back to the real, real world instead of that fake real world, and we get to talk about all these things we don't know. We don't know the rabbit, we don't know about the Tartarus, we don't know about the other world, we don't know why it was destroyed, we don't know why Luca was able to open that door, and we don't know why Alice's subordinates won't come and contact her. So now that we've talked about all that, we get to talk about what we do next, which is head for the other Tartarus on this continent. Coming through this cave system, where we enter a cave and leave a cave and enter another cave and leave it as well enter a third cave exit the third cave and enter a fourth and final cave exit that and everybody's relieved to be finally out of the caves after spending all of 40 seconds in there. This is another Tartaros. Whoops. The Tartaros have exceedingly strange enemies. And that's important to notice. This is Promiskeen, and she will join our party for free. Which is very good because she's going to be our fighting power for the next three bosses. So here we are in Rostrum Village, here to talk to the mayor who has a letter for Luca. What we learned from the letter is we need to talk to Makaida in the hidden village of Enrica. A hidden elf village. Every good RPG has to have a hidden elf village. Well, fantasy RPGs. News from the continent, three miles at war. Well, we can't wait to get to that, so let's head for that continent. Another cutscene. Grab a fish. Speak to Alice and then enter the tent to end the cutscene. Gaining two more abilities. The ships aren't running, but Nero has, knows of an artifact that can let us get across the ocean. It's in this cave over here. Watch out for that chest, it's a mimic. This is an exceedingly hard bob. Except Neris will take care of her for us. Now there's Tamamo, except it's actually the White Rabbit, who decides to murder Neris. Only Nero shows up and takes care of her. The two of them disappear together, and we see them both separately, so they didn't kill each other. Now we 
we're back to Ilya's port. And now I'm being in possession of the MacGuffin, we can move on. You know, did I ever move Promestine into my party? No, I didn't. Okay. Swapping Lookout is a free action. And Promestine will carry this battle all by herself. Fire, brimstone, destruction, and jumping into the ocean. We are saved by mermaids. Recover our party and let's get out of Natalia port. Here in San Ilya, we're going to recover a book. After a good deal of talking, we finally learn we need a book that Luca's father left behind here. <laughs> After this brief labyrinth-themed dungeon, of course. The, mi the monsters here are fairly repetitive, as there are only two of them. The two that appeared in the original trilogy. They really ought to have replaced or added one. Okay. So here's the boss. Promestine will again carry the day here. For a third enemy type they should have made. 4096 page and if you know why I picked that number instead of another number you are a smart person this will be our last use of harpy feathers warping out of this town and here in this next dungeon is the deciding point of whether this speedrun will work or not because this boss Sylph has a 30 or 40 percent chance of winning against me. And if she wins, I have to start over from scratch. Luck is with us, so we are good to go. Here's another boss. We're just going to surrender. Because we don't fight this boss. Well, we don't win against the boss anyway. Nero does. A quick and easy battle. Interesting fact, the move I used against that Berserker is the same move that Neris used to defeat Nanabi. Here's a long cutscene of something that didn't happen, or should have happened, or didn't happen but should have happened in another universe. Really, paradoxes again, it's hard to explain. Uh, in fact, it isn't fully explained in this game at all. Let's swap Alistar for Sylph, and Promestine takes the lead again. Also, Sylph will need to equip her Encount Half ability, and we'll need to re-equip Luca as well. Because he's now an angel, he forgot to keep his abilities equipped. Here in the desert, if you only have three characters with that ability on, you can still have encounters, but if you have four, like we do now, no encounters. What we're looking for here is the second elemental fairy, Gnome the fairy of earth. That's her up there. You can see her run off to the west, which is a red herring. Where we will actually find her is over here. I almost always win against Gnome, 
but there has been one of my runs where she has won. And luck is with me once more. That should eliminate all the troubles I'll have. Gnome and switch out Merk. Now having known we can get into this final Tartaros, which was blocked off by an ever-shifting mound of dirt, which only the Earth Spirit could move. This place is falling apart, but we don't need to spend a lot of time here. Now we know that the plot is taking off because there's all kinds of talking that you can't skip. Heading up the tower, there's all kinds of explosions as we're being chased by the final boss. And what we're here for? Meeting with La Croa, some suspicious guy, who will give us some talking and tell us to run away while he deals with the final boss for us. He has Radio join our party, which is good because we need all the help we can get and we teleport to safety as he takes on the final boss, Adoramelk. Now we've got our fighting party in order, and we can take care of what's left of Adoramelk. This is, according to the radio, out of the milk at 10% power. And that's that. Is she dead? Well, not quite. Here she shows up again to try and get Luca. Luca's father shows up, cuts her in half, and wanders off into abyss, and we run back to safety. And that completes the first chapter of Mon Moose Quest Paradox RPG. Before ending the video, I'm going to show the two things I showed at the end of the speed walkthrough, just for fun, and then I'll bid you adieu. Here's the tower, which appears after the final dungeon, and you can fight the enemies in there if you want to recruit them or whatever. Now for that key I told you we'd use at the end of the walkthrough, we use it at this door here, and we enter the May Keep, the underworld prefecture. Here we can talk to the Shinigami and start a new game with all of our levels and items, or rather lack of levels because we didn't get that many. And that concludes our walkthrough of speedrun of Mon Moose Quest Paradox RPG.